I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we come before the Lord to offer the worship of our hearts, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, in the covenant of your Christ, you never cease to gather to yourself from all nations a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. Grant, we pray, that your church, faithful to the mission entrusted to her, may continually go forward with the human family and always be the leaven and the soul of human society, to renew it in Christ and transform it into the family of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The elders of Israel and all the leaders of the tribes, the princes in the ancestral houses of the children of Israel, came to King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from the city of David, which is Zion. All the people of Israel assembled before King Solomon during the festival in the month of Ethiam the seventh month. When all the leaders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the ark. They carried the ark of the Lord and the meeting tent with all the sacred vessels that were in the tent. The priests and the Levites carried them. King Solomon and the entire community of Israel present for the occasion sacrificed before the ark sheep and oxen too many to number or count. The priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place beneath the wings of the cherubim in the sanctuary, the Holy of Holies of the temple. The cherubim had their wings spread out over the place of the Ark, sheltering the Ark and its poles from above. There was nothing in the Ark but the two stone tablets which Moses had put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel at their departure from the land of Egypt. When the priests left the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord so that the priests could no longer minister because of the cloud since the Lord's glory had filled the temple of the Lord. Then Solomon said, the Lord tends, intends to dwell in the dark cloud. I have truly built you a princely house, a dwelling where you may abide forever. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Behold, we heard of it in Ephra, Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Ishar. Let us enter into his dwelling. Let us worship at his footstool. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Advance, O Lord, to your resting place, you in the ark of your majesty. May your priests be clothed with justice. Let your faithful ones shout merrily for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, reject not the plea of your anointed. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, he laid the sick in the marketplaces. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Solomon, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, has built a splendid temple to the Lord in Jerusalem. It is to become the central place of worship for all God's people who henceforth will have an obligation on important feasts if they are able to make pilgrimage from their homes to Jerusalem. There together as a people to offer worship and sacrifice to the Lord, who is especially present in the temple and through the worship conducted at the temple. In the Holy of Holies, the most sacred part of the temple, the Ark of the Covenant, which the children of Israel brought into the Holy Land through the 40 years of wandering in the desert as a sacrament, we could use that word, a sacrament of God's presence, a sign that he had chosen his people to be his own and that he would be ever faithful to them. That ark is brought into the temple in Jerusalem, into the Holy of Holies. The ark which is a chest, but upon which is a throne with the figures of two cherubim, angels, extending their wings over the throne. The throne is an image of God enthroned in the heavens, whose power suffuses all of creation. And by his word of revelation, has privileged Israel to be his witnesses in the world. This is why in the chest there are only the tablets of Moses that contain the word of God. All of this is a prefigurement of what has been fulfilled in Christ. For Christ is the Word, the Word made flesh. The Father's revelation of his love and truth to his people, now in the New Covenant, not limited to one particular nation, but to all nations, in fact, to the whole of humankind.
And the, the temple in Jerusalem, which is no more, is now fulfilled in Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the one who is the image of the Father, such that to see him is to see the Father. And as St. Peter says, we are living stones in the temple of Christ. In other words, the worship of God is situated in the human heart, enlightened by faith. For only through faith in Christ do the words of revelation reveal their power to us, and the Spirit changes our heart. But we as the people of God in the New Covenant, we worship in buildings. We do not call them temples, for we are members of the temple that is Christ, that is the church. But we do have our Ark of the Covenant. which is the Eucharist. And it is placed fittingly in a central place of honor in the church building. And we know that in the Eucharist, in this holy sacrament, God is present. So that through faith, the love of God, his mercy, his kindness, and his truth and light may become the food of our hearts in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And the incense that we use sometimes at Mass recalls the, the cloud. The cloud which is sometimes in the tradition called the cloud of unknowing. For it is a sign of God's presence and we use incense to recognize that God is present with his people. But as anyone knows who has driven through a heavy fog, the cloud also obscures we cannot see God face to face, at least not now. And so it is faith that must lead us to this place of worship. Faith that opens our heart to recognize the word and its import in our lives. That draws us like the, the sick who are mentioned in the gospel, who come to Jesus. And we are told that as many as touched Jesus, even the tassel on his cloak, in faith, for we are not talking about magic here, but those who touch Jesus in faith, as we touch him in the Eucharist in faith, By that grace, we are healed. Let us stand. We lay all of our needs in the hands of our merciful God, who is ever faithful and present to his people. Lord, you are a helper close at hand in time of distress. Grant peace of heart to all who are troubled and afraid. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, you are in our midst when life's ills assail us. Keep our hearts fixed on you amid all disturbances. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, your word is the river of life which gives joy to your people. 
Refresh in prayer all who are burdened, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, you put an end to war and to the weapons of war. Teach us to lay aside all quarrels and attacks on our neighbors, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For peace in the world, for the protection of our servicemen and women and first responders, for those who have fallen for the consolation of their families, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For God's blessings of unity and peace upon all marriages and families, for an abundance of vocations to the priest, a diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For God's blessings upon our parish and all of our parish apostolates, that by coming to Jesus in faith and encountering the God who is faithful, we may bear fruit for the new evangelization. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for all those who are burdened by any need, for the sick and dying, the homeless and unemployed, for widows and orphans, refugees, immigrants and migrants, for victims of war, violence, natural disasters, persecutions and human exploitation, for all those who are weighed down by addictions or chronic pain or mental illness, for all the suffering poor, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, especially among our family, friends, and benefactors, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, and for the special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. Almighty and ever-living God, your word is the rock in which we take refuge against all outward disturbance and inner turmoil. Pour forth upon your people the refreshing stream of living water which wells up from the heart of your Son, that we may dwell together in inward and outward peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we accept it by your word. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with kindness the offerings we bring you, O Lord, and grant that your church, which came forth from the side of Christ as he slept upon the cross, may ever draw her holiness from participation in this mystery, living by it always and responding worthily to her founder, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Kurt Buher. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus, your beloved Son. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Hugh and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
one of the soldiers opened his side with a lance, and at once there came forth blood and water. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. Nourished by the sacrament of your Son, we implore you, Lord, to make fruitful the work of your church. For by it, you constantly reveal the fullness of the mystery of salvation to the poor, 
whom you have called to an honored place in your eternal kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us.